Okay, so I have my um, LEDs set up again, and uh, today I've only got three out of the four uh, strips plugged in because I'm, I'm using a using a Mega today rather than an Uno just because it's got the extra power pins. Um, and I've programmed a new sketch that goes through all of the colours. It's got a glitch in it, but it will uh, become apparent. Um, so it just goes through all of the colours. So that bright change there is, is the glitch, but I'll explain that in the code later. And it's uh, it's quite difficult to see the actual colours from the uh, LEDs themselves quite like directly. So it's a lot easier if I've got a white white wall. So if I point the camera directly at the wall, you can see it going through all the different colours. Anyway, um, I'm going to be making some modifications to this code so that rather than driving the strings in sequential serial, it's going to drive them in parallel. Okay, so here is my uh, slightly updated sketch from last time. All of this is pretty much the same at the top, the definitions are the same. I'm using the, uh, the same pins, um, just on a Mega rather than an Uno this time. And uh, I'm still initialising the, the array to start off with in the same way as before. Um, so the only real change I've made to this code so far is this, is this main loop. So what it basically does is there's, well they're RGB LEDs and there's six kind of base colours within the RGB that we can go to very easily and very quickly within code. So obviously we can go to red, green or blue very easily. Um, but we can also mix two of those together to get a third colour um, and they are I think they're pronounced cran magenta and uh, or cyan magenta and yellow so um, they're very easy to make and uh, I'll go through the code that makes them um, basically all we're doing here is we're fading the same as the, the basic fade program from 0 to 255 the value that gets sent out um, for for each LED, um, so that this this external for loop is the one controlling the color, and then this internal for loop here is just looping through to set the color for every LED. So we've got thirty two LEDs, so we're going from one, or well, we're going from zero to less than thirty two. So that's from zero to thirty one, um, and we're just setting the value. Um, of each LED color, like the red array for this LED, um, to the value of the external loop, which is the fade up or fade down. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fade to purple, um, but I'm going to make an assumption that we're already the blue LEDs are already full on. So it's not purple; it's it's magenta. But um, if we mix red and blue, we get magenta which is like a pinky purple color so if we're already at blue we just need to fade the red up which is what this does and then we just update the string every time we update the array so we put all of our new values into the array and then we update the uh, the strings um, and then if we've got purple we just fade to red by fading down blue so this just fades down it's the opposite of a fade up um, from red we can add green to get to yellow uh, which is this next one and then from yellow to get to green we just need to remove the red so that's this next one and then from uh, green to get to cyan um, we need to add back in the blue uh, and then to fade to blue we just remove the um, the green which is done here so that's that's basically how this code works it's very very simple it's just a fade up and down program but it's split into six sections because we're fading between six different colors and that's just how it works. So the next change I've, or we're going to make to this code um, is that I've pulled uh, the shift out function out of a library and I've put it directly into my code. So rather than calling shift out, I've, um, I've had to rename it to shift out one because obviously you can't have two functions 
that are called the same thing. So I've pulled out the function, it's a direct copy, and I've changed it to shift out one to avoid the clash. Um, and then I've updated all of these shift outs to shift out one, just that we're using basically the local version rather than the uh, the built-in environment version or the uh, the original Arduino um, version. So I found it. Uh, well, I had to look up where it was, and I uh, hit upon the forum, and uh, it was here in the code is here in the forum, but. I've copied it directly from the uh, library. I went in and found it in the library and copied it directly. So uh, that's what this is down here. Um, so the first thing uh, I guess is important is to basically clean, clean this code up. Um, I'm still going to be using this code, but I'm going to move it from basically like a serial output interface into a parallel output uh, interface. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this uh, most significant bit first or least significant bit first stuff and we're just going to use most significant bit first so I'm actually going to remove that reference from all of these uh, these bits of code um, there is quite a few of them in this at the, at the current point so uh, Remove all of those. And then in our definition of the shift out one, we need to remove uh, this variable which gets passed, which is the bit order. So we can remove that. And then um, we're not going to be using least significant bit, we're going to be using most significant bit first. So uh, we just need to remove all of the references between that and just leave in this bit of code here which is what actually outputs the um, the value to the data pin bit by bit and then it pulses the, the clock pin um, as before so we haven't really made any changes as yet, we've just cleaned up the code. So next thing to do is just to, uh, is to upload this uh, and make sure it still works. Uh, it's always good while programming to have something plugged in and you can just output it and test it because then if there is a little problem, you can sort of know where that problem is going to be because it will be in the bit of code that you've just changed between when you re-upload it and when you've previously re-uploaded it. So it makes troubleshooting a lot easier. So it's always handy to have. Um, I've got it plugged in and it's, it's running as before. So we haven't broken it, we've just improved the code. So the, um, the next thing that I'm gonna change is I'm actually gonna remove the, the data pin and the clock pin variables from, uh, from this function. So I'm actually gonna force those definitions um, so that they are always stuck. So the only thing we pass when we update the string, um, the only thing that we want to actually output between, well, between the calling of the update string function and this function which is actually going to push our data out, the only thing I want to pass in that, that transaction is this variable at the end. I want to remove the pin and the clock pin information from this. So basically what I'm going to do is make this so that it only updates the first uh, string, so data pin 1 and clock pin 1. And I can't remember if I've used capitals or not. So capital in, in data. So this needs to be lowercase and this needs to be lowercase. So now I'm just gonna upload this again, just to make sure I haven't broken, oh, have I got that run the wrong way? Oh no, of course. So now that I've removed that 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 uh, function requiring those um, variables, I need to remove them from where I call that function as well. And 
I'm only doing it for the first string at the moment, so I'm just going to comment out all of the others. I'm going to leave them there because I'm going to use those in a moment. So if I upload it now, now it will only actually uh, program the first string out of the four that I've got there. So um, okay, so there's actually nothing coming out of uh, Miley D's. So there's no light showing. It's not going through the colours, um, and that's because I've run into a timing issue. Um, previously, when we had the the four different shifts out as in we were doing string one and then string two and then string three and then string four there's a time delay between sending the last bit of information to the first string and sending you know the first bit of, of information to that first string again on the next cycle um, and when we're doing it consist like only doing one string consistently there isn't enough time between the end of that string and the beginning of that string um, to reset one of the registers within the first uh, WS2801 chip in the line. Um, and this is best explained in the data sheet. So in the data sheet, towards the, the bottom end of the data sheet, there is the timing, there's uh, the timing um, diagram which shows the red, green and blue timing uh, stuff and rising edge and falling edge of the clock line to the data line, etc. But up here it does actually say the uh, clock pin needs to be low for more than 500 US and that resets this pin uh, not pin, sorry, register um, which then tells it to start looking for data again so without that low period you've updated an infinitely long string so the first chip just gets confused and just doesn't act as you want it to so you need to have it low for this period and we can do that in our code by adding a delay in and this is not the uh, the most ideal way of doing it but at the end of the update string so once we've updated our string we can just add a slight delay uh, let's just a delay of one maybe uh, if help if I could spell um, and that should fix this problem so I just upload this again and this is the beauty of troubleshooting as you go along you find errors you can fix them so that's now working uh, as it should and yeah, scrolling through the colours quite nicely. Great, so now that we've got it working for one string, we need to make our code parallel. So in our uh, shift out function, the new one that we're working on, um, we're currently only sending to the first string. So what we now need to do is we need to send um, duplicates, let's just say duplicates for the moment, to the other strings. So what we can do is we're gonna copy uh, this line of code which is the actual line that writes the values out and we're going to send it to uh, lines 2, 3 and 4 um, down the data pins and then we're also going to clock all of our uh, other clock pins in the same order so 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, and they all need to go high and then low um, and I'm doing them in this, uh, like keeping the order the same because it just makes the timing um, all like the same. So the time between um, the clocks going high and low is, is the same and it's evenly spread out amongst all four. So obviously this is only sending the same value to all of them. So I'm just going to upload this code to make sure it works. Um, and then we're going to change it so that we can send different values to the different strings. Cool. So I've just uploaded that. That works, which is is good. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to change this. So here we've just got one value being brought into our function. And I'm going to change that so we have four values being brought into our function. And we're going to call them val1. Val two, Val three, and Val four, and you can probably guess Val one, Val two, Val three, and Val four, uh, respectively, match with our data pins and our clock pins for each of the four lines. So one, two, three, four, and they're just eight bit data coming in. So now we need to change our shift out function up here, where we're sending the data because we're sending one. 
and we need to send four. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is we're just going to um, basically send four lots of data to to each one, um, and it is literally as simple as this. Um, so it's just copy and pasting job. Uh, and again, I'm just going to upload this to make sure it's working again. Which again it is. So in our previous um, sketches where we had separate shift outs for each line, um, what we were doing is we were, we were sending different data to each of the strings. Um, so what we can do is we can just copy this in from here. So this is the data we were sending to our pin 2. So this for the blue now goes into, so this is our blue shift out function and it goes value 1, value 2, value 3, value 4. So it needs to go in here. So we're just going to copy it from where it is and we're going to put it in there. And then the same goes for our third uh, string. So we're going to copy that in and put it into our third string. And then for our fourth string, the same thing happens. Rather than copying, I'm just going to put that in. And then we just need to do the, the same thing for each of the, uh, the colors. So for the red and the green also. So I'm just going to copy these from the blue uh, down. And then that just upload it to double check that it's still working. which it is. Now unfortunately my code actually sets all of the LEDs to the same colour so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, just quickly test it with my old main loop um, from one of my old files I made, I think it was this one, yeah. So I'm actually just going to copy this loop um, from here And I'm actually going to replace, um, so I'm actually just going to call it the void loop one. Uh, I'm going to drop the uh, other loop in. So this should now just upload. So basically, what I've done is I've changed this function, the void loop, to be a function that's not called. So therefore, it's just not being uh, compiled and sent to the Arduino. And I've just dropped the old loop in, um, and that's now now running. Um, so that is showing that we are actually sending using our new function which is down here which sends all of them in parallel uh, it is now working now the only thing that we have got to uh, take into consideration is this delay so obviously delays are never good when you're when you're working with real-time um, control systems so well in this way they're not not good so we can actually reduce this um, delay down so we uh, yeah we can go um, smaller than one millisecond, um, and I've got that in a separate piece of code that I was playing with the other day, um, which is the delay the microseconds. Um, so we can put that in instead of the delay, and we can work on how long it is. So I've well for mine I've worked I can go down to about eight hundred. Um, the data sheet does say five hundred. I tried it and it didn't really work. So 800 is about the lowest I can go with my strings. Um, and it's quite easy to uh, to see if you go any lower. So let's just go, um, let's go to 500 and I'll show you what happens. So 500 is actually completely too fast. Um, so I've had to put 600 in just to show this, this problem that comes out and it's quite difficult to see the problem other than they're going crazy. Uh, but actually, if you look at this this first one here, you see it's stuck on red, and then the second one's stuck on off, and then the third one sort of updates, but doesn't really, it's not doing what's meant to be doing. Um, and that's because basically the first chip is not getting enough delay between the cycles of the code being, or the, the data being sent. So it's just stuck on its first value. It thinks it's got an infinite string or it's receiving an infinite stream of data with no breaks in it, or what it thinks are breaks. So it's just treating it as such, and just passing it out to the next one. 
So the next one's getting the same data minus a, a packet or a frame of that data, and then the third one is getting you know the same again with two packets less data. So there's a bigger gap. Uh, the further you go down the chain, the bigger the gap is, and that's why, for instance, all of these you can see the beginning ones of the chains are uh, they're not really working the way they should be, whereas the rest of the chain is working how it should be, and that's that's because of this timing issue. So I'm going to actually just leave the camera on this, and I'm going to change it from 600 to 800, uh, and you'll see a change when it uploads. So now you can see that actually it's behaving as it should, or it looks almost like it's behaving as it should. Certainly the later LEDs on the chain towards this end are working the way they should, other than this one which is broken, should have said that. But actually, if you look at the first one again, see if I can get a camera, it's not really going to show it up, but this, just this LED on its own, um, it does actually glitch every now and then. Which is again an indication that actually this 800 is is still too small. So if we go to 900, I'll just upload that. So now we've gone to 900 and it's behaving. Well, it looks like it's behaving exactly as it should. So there you go. So 900 uh, microseconds is is about the right time for this.